We're driving a 2022 Kia Carnival. Coming up, despite many things we do like about the Carnival, we're gonna tell you why we would not buy one. But first, information explosion. Minivans are all about the interior, so let's start there. Sweetie, what do you think of the style of the interior of the Kia Carnival? It is one of the most stylish minivans I've seen. I think there's a yeah. lot of design in a segment where you normally don't see a lot of design. Yeah, the look and feel of a lot of these toggle switches is really unique. They're so beefy. You like a beefy switch, yeah. do you? <laughs> Apparently I do. Oh my. <laughs> Do you know what's missing in this region? I don't. Somewhere to throw your purse. Oftentimes when you're in a minivan, mm. you've got this big open area down here. In fact, that was one of the most controversial elements of the Toyota Sienna we drove, is that they had the bridge console, which covered this area up. This whole thing where you've got the shifter, you've taken away a big uh, bit of space that oftentimes minivan people absolutely love. So it's giving you the door functionality of a minivan with the interior functionality of an SUV? Well, not necessarily functionality. I would say it's more aesthetic. Okay. Um, it's the vibe of an SUV. <laughs> if you were in here, you might not know you were driving a minivan. But it is still a minivan. So you've got sliding side doors. Um, you've got three rows of seats. And one thing that distinguishes this from an SUV is ride height. It's really low versus an SUV. So um, any thoughts about getting kiddo in and out? Oh, so easy. She can step right in. She's in the second row, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're driving the SX Prestige package because this is a press vehicle. It's the fanciest of carnivals. <laughs> Clown with a monocle. <laughs> Because it's the SX Prestige package, it has these super fancy second row seats, which are really cool. You've got um, power adjustment, you've got these little uh, Ottoman style leg supports that you can uh, flip up here. In fact, Kiddo's making good use of them right now. Uh, you can uh, tilt the seat back. There's a ton of flexibility. On the side, you have these manual adjustments. If you want to slide the seat forward and aft, you have to pull the release and physically slide it forward and back. You can also slide it inboard and outboard, kind of akin to to um, the buddy mode feature in the Honda Odyssey, though there's a much wider range of inboard movement with the Honda solution than there is here in the Carnival. Mm. I dig the second row seats because they're so darn fancy, but there's a problem. Ow. Sweetie, can you tell us about the problem? I could not figure out an easy way to move that second row seat out of the way so that she could access the third row. I couldn't figure that out either. Normally there would be a lever, a button, a switch. There's some way to tilt the seat forward and slide it out of the way. I don't think that exists. So the solution is pull the lever, slide it as far forward as you can, and then reach over to the inboard power adjustment and angle the seat back forward. We might be stupid. In fact, in many ways, we probably are stupid, but do you know a way to get the second row seats in the SX Prestige package out of the way? I couldn't find it. I get paid to do this. <laughs> To me, that is a, um, a good reason not to get the SX Prestige package. Usage of the third row is kind of a critical component in minivan ownership. If you can't get to the third row, it's almost like you don't have one. That's true. Regarding second row space, um, there's plenty of space there. Um, the third row, I found okay. I was a little, I don't wanna say underwhelmed, but I, I, I wasn't whelmed <laughs> by the third row space. The second row seats in this one too are also not removable, which means that if you want to um, have your minivan set up for cargo hauling, you kind of can't make use of all the cargo space because those seats are never coming out. And the infotainment that is back there is just basically an iPad stuck to the back of the seat. So that makes it more difficult for our daughter to um, climb in and out of it. A quick note about the latch points. They're totally exposed, which is, makes it very easy to install the car seat. I should mention that the uh, fanciest trim uh, only includes seven seats, and the least fanciest trim only includes seven seats. Uh, if you want eight <laughs> seats, uh, it is optional on the base trim, and then standard on the other trims. One thing I really do like from a family friendliness perspective is the fact that seven USB ports come standard, and they're spread throughout all three rows. So even in the third row, in the cheapest, carnival tram, you can still have um, power to uh, keep your kids uh, distracted and happy. 
Cargo space is really good. After the third row, there are 40.2 cubic feet of space, which is uh, stupendous. That's outrageous. It's absurd. Pull out the uh, thesaurus so we can come up with <laughs> other words to describe how good it is. And I find the uh, third row functionality um, pretty easy. It's, it's simple to uh, pull the seats down into the retracted position. Um, although I did have one time where it kind of got caught into a midway spot and I couldn't release it. Things got a little bit awkward. And then I hurt my finger while trying to, uh, to, to sort it out. That might be user error, but I've never had that happen with the Honda Odyssey. No. Assuming you have a carnival where you can remove the second row seats, uh, there's like a, more than 145 cubic feet of space, which is really, really good for the segment. So you can get a version of this where you could do some legit cargo hauling. It'd be awesome. You'll have to buy a bunch of stuff just to justify <laughs> having your Kia Carnival. Snow cone machine, cotton candy machine. Yeah, you have the churro heater. Yeah, like uh, if you're buying a carnival, you have to buy on theme. On a safety note, the National Highway Transportation and Safety Administration has not rated the Carnival just yet, but it includes a full suite of active driver assists like automatic emergency braking, lane keeping assist, which I'm activating right now, and it's doing a great job keeping us centered, hooray, and there's a rear occupant sensor system, and not just one of the ones where you've opened the door and it's like, well, you must have put something back there, we better alert you. This has the standard ultrasonic sensors, you can see it right up here, so if you accidentally leave a child in the back of your carnival, the vehicle will detect motion and start honking. And it can even alert you via text through the Uvo app if you've uh, set your phone up to be connected with it. To me, if uh, you're a concerned parent, and some parents are more concerned than others, <laughs> that would be a very reassuring thing. Overall, what do we think? Is the Kia Carnival family friendly? Family yeah. friendly. Family friendly. Moving on. Rear window test. Is that it? What? High five anyway. Armrest test. Oh, I want to love these armrests. They're so squishy, but they're a little too far outboard. It's very hard for me to have my hands on the steering wheel and my elbows comfortably placed on these perches. I'm going to go halfway for both the inboard and the outboard. Hey, if you subscribe to our channel, if you haven't, please do. At 100,000 subs, we're going to review a windowless white van. Style! Front end, the grill looks like a disco ball to me. The headlights look like little lightning bolts or something. <laughs> or not the headlights, what are those things? Those are just LED kind of um, position Fire? lights. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're fashion lights. <laughs> I love the fashion lights. I think it looks like a bit much, but you're trying to like minimize the minivanness of a minivan, and that's certainly one way to do it. So it hides its minivanness well. You know what hides um, the minivan style even more? Not buying a minivan. But what do you guys think? Do you like the style of the Kia Carnival? Tell us in the comments. If you're curious what I'm driving or flying between YouTube videos, give me a follow on Instagram. And if you want to see what our family's up to, give Evie a follow. In motion! We are just making our way through um, desolation. <laughs> And as we do that, uh, there's the uh, things you'd want in a minivan. Uh, fairly quiet cabin, smooth ride. One of the things I noticed while driving around is that the turning circle is incredible in this thing. Very, very tight turning circle. So that um, low speed, I'm going shopping kind of maneuverability is a real plus. As far as power, I'm going to floor it. Whee! fairly prompt downshifts. I would say that's not an outrageous amount of power, and if you load this thing up with uh, eight passengers, uh, eh, yeah, you know, it'll, it'll probably be just fine. It's not like a rollicking good time, but I think there is um, an adequate amount of power. And I do like the shifts from the uh, automatic transmission. Very smooth. I feel like we don't have to belabor the driving experience because in many ways the Kia Carnival does what you would hope a minivan would do, which is basically like, yeah, it's fine. You don't think about it. You've got bigger things to worry about, like um, where am I taking the kids? What is that smell? Would you stop screaming? Oh, please, just stop <laughs> screaming. But enough about what I think. What does Sweetie think? Sweetie's at the wheel and she's going to floor it. Let's see what that needle is full throttle. Well, semi-needed. Getting up to speed. How's that feel? <laughs> As my girl said, speedy. 
tell me, what do you think about the visibility in the Kia Carnival? So I like how large the windows are. What about that C pillar? Like, cause there's a window back there. Can you even see the quarter window? No, I can't see the quarter window. <laughs> yeah, the headrest for the second row seats completely block the rear quarter window. Yeah. So over the shoulder visibility, to my mind, seems a little dicey. Would you agree? I would agree. Thank heaven, blind spot warning comes standard. Okay, so you've got highway driving assist active, which is keeping you in your lane, and it's automatically monitoring to make sure that you're not uh, too close to the car ahead. Of course, you're going slow enough that there will never be a car ahead. <laughs> it feels good. I wish when it stops working, like when the lanes widen there, that it would give me some sort of audible alert or an alert on the steering wheel with a vibration. Mm, yeah, something official like, alert, <laughs> alert, steering wheel disengaged. I would like to know. <laughs> Kia, you're welcome to use that uh, audio sample in your future <laughs> products. Micah says the steering wheel is deactivated. <laughs> oh, this is good. You've got a car ahead of you. Let's see what the uh, the system does. Oh, my. Now look in the gauge cluster. It's going to okay. sense a car there pretty soon. Okay. So, yeah, there you go. you got a little car off in oh, the distance. Oh, that is really reassuring. I know that you know it's there. <laughs> yes. Okay, that's working very well. All right, Sweetie has made use of uh, some advanced driver assist technology and it hasn't gone poorly. That's so far. A, that's a win in my book. Let me get back in the driver's seat. Good job, Sweetie. I think overall, the Kia Carnival is a fine driving minivan. Staggering forward, emotion factor. Surprisingly, a, a minivan with an emotion factor that doesn't come from your family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's probably mostly about style. Absolutely. Though I would say that the style component is also supplemented by some family-friendly features that we are going to mention in the remarks section. If you're feeling emotionally moved to get a Kia Carnival of your very own, click the Kelly Blue Book listing link in the description below. Remarks! I teased that there are some family-friendly features. Sweetie, let's talk about the family-friendly features. Can I distract you and talk about how much I love the aesthetic of the infotainment system? I mean, there's a bunch of semis coming the opposite direction, but I don't know how bad that could go. Yeah, tell me all about it. <laughs> There's a cool, what is that called? Like vaporwave? Vaporwave? <laughs> it sounds like a vape shop. You guys There's going down to vaporwave? <laughs> oh man, the selection is outrageous. There's a really cool aesthetic to it. It looks like it belongs on Moonbeam City. Oh, the short lived um, animated okay. series uh, featuring the uh, voice of Rob Lowe. Yes. Um, can we talk about what I was gonna, uh, what we were talking about though? We heard the family friendly sure. features? <laughs> <laughs> family schmamly. Look at these graphics. Wow. First, there's passenger view, which pull, also pulls up passenger talk. You can see um, your kiddos in the back and see how they're behaving, if they're behaving, if they're just looking adorable and waving at you. Yeah, it's, it's like literally like a big brother uh, <laughs> camera where you can observe what's happening in the back. Uh, Honda has a similar feature. And then also passenger talk amplifies the front seat passengers, voices for those in the rear to uh, facilitate better communication. And then uh, the third one of the the uh, trifecta is quiet mode. It lowers the volume in the back completely so that your media is only being played in the front. So if you're trying to get your baby to sleep but you still want to listen to your inappropriate podcast, quiet mode. Baby doesn't need to hear about all those murders <laughs> without early. They found the torso where? <laughs> we already hit on some of the infotainment stuff, but I'll mention that there's an eight inch unit standard and this is the optional 12.3 inch unit. And that's a lot of real estate. And I like how it seamlessly blends with the uh, digital gauge cluster over here. And in, in the gauge cluster, when I uh, turn on the turn signal, um, this is an optional feature, but it shows your blind spot camera view there, which is cool. Also, there's a 360 degree camera system available, a ton of angles, uh, all sorts of visibility, one of the features that I really like is the smart tailgate. This is a, a Kia Hyundai feature where you just hang out with a key near the uh, back and after three seconds it will automatically um, pop up. One thing that the uh, Carnival has that I haven't seen before is an automatic shut feature. So as soon as you walk away with the key, it will uh, automatically shut the tailgate. So I didn't know this had that though. So the first time I walked up, it just started, kept beeping at me like beep. There's a button you can press to deactivate the automatic close function, but ah. it's it's a pretty neat feature. You can also use that automatic open functionality when walking up to the side of the vehicle. The side doors will slide open, but I, in my experience, you have to get very close. You kind of have to put like a like a hip up to the door in order for it to detect it. Um, I like that you don't have to like kick a foot underneath the door or anything like that. You know what's surprising to me? The GoPros haven't overheated yet. Good job, GoPro! Yeah, you're doing it! Yeah! GoPro! 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 Go 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 
Yay! I was sure they were going to climb up right then. <laughs> <laughs> if they do quit, we did not fake it. In the beginning of the video, I teased that we, though there's a lot of things we like about the Kia Carnival, would not buy one. Do you know why? Do you know why? Do you know why? The answer, no all-wheel drive. You can get all-wheel drive in a Chrysler Pacifica or a Toyota Sienna, but you cannot get all-wheel drive on the Kia Carnival. And we live in the mountains, despite this arid landscape through which we are driving, and uh, all-wheel drive would be a critical component if we were to buy a minivan. Another thing you cannot get with the Kia Carnival, at least not yet, a hybrid powertrain. The Toyota Sienna comes standard as a hybrid and gets incredible fuel economy. Same thing with the uh, Chrysler Pacifica. It doesn't come standard with the hybrid, but you can get a hybrid, and it's a plug-in hybrid that'll do 32 miles of pure electric range. So if fuel economy is important to you, the Kia Carnival is not your best choice. Let's talk about trims. So the base LX costs $32,100, but it comes really well equipped. Power sliding side doors, smart key access, and LED headlights all come standard. And those are kind of some of those basics that I would definitely want on my minivan. That said, if you need eight seats, it costs about $2,000 for the LX seating package. And that also gives uh, you a power driver's seat and like heated front seats. So there's all these little upgrades. So it's not just $2,000 for an eighth seat. The one I I would go with would be the EX trim. So the EX starts at $37,600, which is a $3,500 jump versus the LX seating package. But what you get for it is a lot of great stuff. The uh, rear camera and the rear passenger talk system and the smart tailgate, three zone automatic climate control, this 12.3 inch display, plus second and third row side sunshades. All that stuff comes with the EX. I would say if you get the EX, that is a very well equipped minivan. And uh, because it includes removable second row seats that I will assume have much better function than these, that would definitely be the one we would go with. Lastly, let's talk about the competitors. So we've already mentioned them, Honda Odyssey, Toyota Sienna, and Chrysler Pacifica are the big ones. Interestingly, among all of those, this is the cheapest base price, but you can't get a hybrid or all-wheel drive. But what you can get is a 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty, which is a nice little reassurance if you're not quite sure about Kia reliability. Hey, did we miss any remarks? If so, tell us in the comment section. Synopsis! <music> In thinking about the essence of the Kia Carnival, they've taken something that's very much like eating your vegetables, which is minivan ownership, and they've enhanced it in a way to kind of take the, the edge off of that, to make it much more palatable. To me, it's the new American version of a Brussels sprout of minivans. Brussels sprouts, we used to eat them as kids and hated them, but now it's like, do you have Brussels? Sure, yeah, balsamic glaze, great. Oh, and the disco ball grill is like the bacon crumbles on top. Yes. Or Parmesan. Hey, we're not judging. Whatever. Hey, if you like this video, please hit the like button. And if you'd like to see more of these kinds of videos, maybe in a minivan, maybe in a helicopter, who knows what we'll be doing, hit that subscribe button. Family, I think we did it. Good job reviewing the Kia Carnival. High five. High five. And you, come get your high five.